Breakthrough test predicts whether organ transplants will be rejected. Scientists have figured out a non-invasive way to determine if a transplanted organ has failed to take in a patient, no matter if it's kidney, liver, lung, or heart, if it's failing to take in the patient. It's the first time that biomarkers of dysfunction have matched across multiple types of transplanted organs, and it hints at the possibility of a blood test that can diagnose early rejection. In all transplant scenarios, a tool that does not yet exist if more research is done, the newly identified biomarkers could even be used to differentiate between various types of organ rejection, including immune issues, inadequate blood supply, or maladaptive repairs. The survival of a transplant differs between organs, with a long-term success rate of 59% of the lungs, 80% of the liver, 82% for the kidney, and 73% for the heart. Rejection can occur at any time after the surgery, of course, even years later, creating a lifelong threat for patients. Usually, doctors suspect transplant rejection when there are signs that the organ in question is not working at full capacity, but sometimes patients might not experience any symptoms before failure occurs in an invasive biopsy, and an invasive biopsy is the only way to tell for sure what's going on. In recent years, several studies have investigated whether there are signs of organ rejection flowing through a patient's blood or urine that can be accessed more easily than via surgery. But potential biomarkers that have been identified are not yet in clinical practice, and they are not predictive for all organ rejections, usually just one type. The current study is a meta-analysis that seeks to bridge that gap. Its authors, led by statistician Harry Robertson from the University of Sydney, have analyzed 54 data sets, including 40 kidney, five lung, five liver, and four heart transplant studies. Comparing individual patient blood samples to their biopsies, the team identified 158 genes that were differently, differentially expressed across all four organs during cases of rejection. That's nearly 20 times higher than what was expected by chance. This discovery is pivotal, pivotal as it allows us to develop strategies to enhance the success rates of all transplant, explains uh, Robinson. Some of these shared biomarkers are involved in the secretion of proteins that stimulate white blood cells, enzymes that induce cell death, receptors on cells that allow materials in and out, and bone marrow cells involved in the, Im the immune response. Robertson and his team argued that their findings demonstrate an unified, a unified pan-organ molecular marker. Their method consistently outperformed other models that are organ-specific and that are currently being modified for clinical use. Nevertheless, it remains to be seen if Robertson and his team's methods hold for transplants of the pancreas, stomach, or intestine. I didn't know that... Uh, stomach and intestine and pancreas could be transplanted. Now, the team has made an interactive website that allows scientists around the world to compare possible biomarkers of transplant rejection against other methods, providing a much needed standardized uh, evaluation. This atlas has led to the development of proof of principle for a universal blood test that can predict the likelihood of transplant rejection before it occurs, Robertson says, potentially setting a new standard in precision medicine, and improving outcomes for transplant recipients worldwide. Since 1989, the one-year survival rate for kidney transplants, the most common organ transplants, has greatly improved, but long-term survival rates have stalled by comparison. Part of the problem is that the doctors still don't have any way to confidentially, confidently and easily assess the earliest days of organ rejection, when drug intervention could help alleviate issues before total failure takes place and another transplant is required. I have noticed many of my patients feel constant anxiety, not knowing if their body is rejecting their transplanted organ or not, explains Northwestern Medicine transplant nephrologist Lorenzo Gallen, who is studying ways to detect early rejection. This was in 2023. They may have waited years for a transplant 
and then find a received one from a loved one or deceased donor, then they spend the rest of their lives worrying about the health of, the, of that organ. The reliable blood test to monitor transplant rejections could change that for the better. The study was published in Nature Medicine and it's on Science Alert by Carly Casella. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.